we were becoming accustomed to our surroundings in La Paz. It was almost time to leave. Our friend Scott had to take off for Alaska immediately after his and Robbie's mission to get my way here. She was stored up in the yard, and work on a new rudder would have to begin later. Our other solo sailor friend, Lauren, was also disappearing from La Paz to Alaska. I'd let him tell you all about it, but the external mic that I filmed with that day didn't work and it recorded no sound. With all our friends heading north, we were left to our own devices. And of course that meant cooking. Some days we prepared our meals almost entirely in the solar oven. Before placing the cooking tray inside, we would give the whole thing a rinse and let it preheat, much like you would a normal oven. Even on our one cloudy day, the first batch of food was ready in about an hour. Fresh food and veggies are plentiful and cheap in La Paz, even though the city is surrounded by barren desert. Without a fridge, they go quickly. So we took advantage of city life and picked up things daily. Generally when you make a kebab, you make big cubes of meat, but um, since we're using a solar cooker, I think it would be better if the, tin, the slices are thin. Add the pieces of meat to the garlic. In this instance, Robbie made enough kebab for an army. smaller beef skewers and one huge honk and chicken one. That's the amount that you can fit in there at one time. At the height of the afternoon heat, it was a good thing we didn't have to use our propane. It's really hot. Growing summer days and local foods found at markets allowed us to experiment with pasta in the solar oven as well. This casserole dish was easy, although it involved adding water throughout the cooking process. First you add your veggies and or meat, oil and spices, and cook them for about 30 minutes. Come back and add more veggies that may cook more quickly. Such as zucchini. Add the pasta, this one that we get here in 200 gram packets for about four or five pesos. cream and water. Make sure to check often and add liquid if the pasta is cooking too dry. With one hurricane after another just south of us, we had to start getting serious about leaving. Oil change with a borrowed oil pump. We ran the engine until the oil was warm checked the dipstick, stuffed the oil pump tube in where you take out the dipstick, and pumped out all the used oil. We disposed of the used oil at a nearby marina. The outrageous current is hard for cleaning bottoms around here, so we just gave the propeller and the shaft a quick scrape. Woo! 104 degrees Celsius in here. Stop. 
stuffing every knack and crony on the boat. Made a small provision run, packed, and filled up with water. Real sophisticated packing going on here. The dogfish did a good job at helping us clean off a little more to the bottom. propane, garbage, diesel, and we were off. Flying along between six to four knots, depending on how the Cormel is blowing. The water is dead flat calm. The boat feels a little heavy, but we're full of water and diesel to the max. Beautiful day to leave La Paz stay at anchor and be in the water or inside during the day so we don't boil up heat. <laughs> That's our plan for the next few days is to chill during the day and to sail at night when there's wind. But, good, uh, good idea. I think that's a good idea. Robert on Shaman told me that we are going to lose the Cormels as soon as we leave. He says there's going to be no wind up the Sio Cortez and I hope that's No, No Cormel? No Cormel. Why? The Cormel is only here in La Paz. It's extremely localized. Wind, like trying to figure out when, when the next time we'll have internet is that was kind of a main challenge this week was trying to top up the uh, the data on the phone the maximum I can get around here is four gigabytes onto my phone account at any one time which is about at two gigabyte uh, rendered movies that gives me about two uploads and I think we got a fish or oh. There's something over there hanging in, so I don't know if it's seaweed or it's fish. Put it up and see if it's... I think it's seaweed though. Oh, it's shining. It's a fishy. It's a little fish. A little fish, we got ourselves some dinner leaving La Paz. It's tiny, what is this? It's probably a Sierra mackerel. No, it's a little trevally, look at that, mmm. There you go. See, my wife's getting into the mode of killing stuff. Ooh, it wasn't attached very well. Then. Yeah. That, that. I love them at this size. This size is the best for valley. Any bigger than this and they get hard and chewy. And Usually I tie them and, and real properly, but some fish have tails that fold backwards like this. And it means you, the knot can slip out. Well, if it's very tight, no, I could technically try. No, so I don't want to lose them. You don't want to lose them? No. Yeah. I could technically tie them on the face like this and drag them from the face, but... Looks kind of like the Revel ship. Yeah, yeah those ones. The fr the medical. No, not the medical frigate. The ones that fly away from the planet Hoth. Oh, like the. They're kind of round, passage, domed. Yeah. Looks a little bit more like the one. Uh, it's flat because of the look. Like they have like a long and a lower, like almost like a keel. Yeah. A long skinny bit and then the engine. The I back. think that's the medical. Yeah, well, no, it's, 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 or it looks like an ostrich jumping forward. You mean like Roadrunner? Yeah. Maybe, actually it looks like a fish. A dolphin fish with mouth in the front and the flipper. And... It looks like whatever you want it to look like. I got from India where you buy a kilo of curry powder for two dollars. Well, you used to. Like curry powder has become super expensive in India now. Cut them in a little chop in little bits. Yeah. Little bits.
steam the chives and boom. Mm. I've stuck to the chef, I don't think the fish is fresh. <laughs> chef, the fish is not fresh. We learned from a local charter captain that the fish we once thought was bonito is actually something different. Big box. A barrelete is darker meat no matter how well you bleed it. No problem for us though. Seared quickly in the frying pan and topped with some sesame seaweed, made for fine dining. We were determined to explore two places in particular that we hadn't visited last time. A small mangrove up one of the coves housed many crabs and salt-encrusted plants. Seed pods that were closed last time we were on the island had exploded open like eggs from alien movies. You know, the small black things are the seeds. After an excursion on land, we decided to swim back to the boat, and at the very last moment before going aboard, Robbie spotted our lunch. The second spot we were headed to was Los Islotes, islands covered in sea lions, a bustling place with tourist boats, birds, and barking. We weren't sure at first about coming to such a crowded spot, but in the end it was well worth it. We had a lot of fun, and the water was filled with a lot of life.
The big one was just big, it's like a big and I won't give a fuck. <laughs> This busy, protected marine place boasted a surprising amount of fish, and luckily for them, or unfortunately for Robbie, he had to leave the spear gun on board. We prepared to head north from the Sea Lion Islands to what is known by cruisers as Isla San Francisco and Isla San Jose. We sailed off the park mooring, Robbie releasing the jib sheet and the roller furling line, just as I climbed up front and released the mooring line. We said goodbye to the islands disappearing behind us and said hello to the new ones ahead. So please like and subscribe, it encourages us to make more videos and keep going on our adventure. You can also share our videos and you can support us by going to the links below in the description. So that's there's a PayPal page as well as a Patreon page that we have linked there. And there are buttons for you to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching!